Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. My name is Matthew Brown, and I'm the Commercial Director at Stratus Business Solutions. At Stratus, we specialize in helping customers achieve digital transformation. We focus specifically on those business processes which are driven by or underpinned by documents. And regardless of whether those documents exist in a physical form as hard copy, or whether they're already in the digital domain, we apply people, process and technology within our DataForge platform to truly deliver business process transformation. We use a variety of different tools and technologies to achieve this. It will come as no surprise, given today's audience, that one of the key tools that we use is M-Files. But this presentation isn't just about M-Files. Um, what we want to do is talk to you about the methodology behind how you go about transforming processes. And of course, this is relating specifically to HR. But equally, what we talk about today can just as easily be applied to any other business process. So without further ado, let me share my screen and let's get started. So the subject of today's presentation is how we can drive innovation, automation and digital transformation within your HR processes. You'll be glad to know that it's not just me speaking today and I'm actually joined by two of my colleagues. Firstly, Ashley Hamer, who is CIO of Stratus and also by James Boot Hanford, who is the head of professional services. And you'll be hearing from both Ashley and James uh, later on in today's session. So just to give you an idea of what you can expect in this presentation, this is what we plan to cover over the course of the next 30 or 40 minutes. Firstly, I'm going to highlight some of the more common information management challenges that HR teams are currently facing. And we'll touch on future trends within HR and where this relates to information management and M-Files. Then we're going to explain based on our experience what the journey often looks like for HR teams who decide to embark on an automation journey. I promise you this isn't death by PowerPoint, so the slides will end there and I'll hand over to Ashley, who is going to show you how you can make digital transformation initiatives a reality and really answer the question, well, how does it really work? How do we get there? James will then provide a brief 10 minute demonstration showing some of the concepts that we've talked about being implemented within M-Files. We'll highlight where we believe the value lies for HR, and then we'll wrap up with a Q&A session at the end. And please, if you think of any questions as we progress through the session, please um, put your questions into the chat and we'll come to them at the end. Let's talk about some of the challenges that HR teams are facing. Would you believe it's over 40 years since the term paperless office was first coined? And today in 2020, we still find that paper is literally, well, it's everywhere. Um, while some processes have transitioned to digital, and despite a lot of documents today being created in the digital domain, we often find that information still finds its way into hard copy documents. This is especially true for HR departments where employee records and files uh, are often held in filing cabinets still uh, or in cupboards. It's no surprise that lots of paper typically leads to manually intensive processes. Whether a HR user is uh, looking for a document or looking for a specific piece of information within a document, or whether they're creating something new as part of the uh, employee onboarding process, there are manual and time consuming tasks everywhere. And quite often they are based in, in managing administration. Although the intense focus around GDPR seems to have diminished, it's still a very real challenge for HR. So here's the information about your employees being stored and managed in a compliant way. Is the information really secure? 
And are you able to, do you still have permission to use your employees' data, even perhaps when they've actually left your business? Business continuity and COVID-19 really go hand in hand. As we know, there has been, there's been a seismic shift in the way that all businesses are, are working, um, certainly in the last three months. And we still don't know quite how the situation is going to pan out and what the long term effects are on working practices um, across businesses. But one thing is really clear, and that's organisations which have previously managed HR records via physical means really need to transition rapidly um, to a system where all information can be readily accessed wherever an employee is. Uh, and controlled in a very structured way. And whether it's for HR teams, line manager or employees themselves, making information easy to find and action when working remotely is increasingly important. I'll just touch briefly on this next slide, but I think it's worth noting some of the future trends for HR which relate to information management. The application of new technology to drive business process automation is unsurprisingly key and remote working is highly relevant as well, particularly in a post COVID-19 environment. And if remote working and flexibility was previously um, thought of as a future trend, well, I think it's fair to say that almost every organization that's been operating the last three months is realising that that is a challenge for here and now and not something in the future. We also know that the employee experience is vital and having a well-oiled HR machine for employees to interact with can certainly contribute to a positive employee experience. Speaking of HR being a well-oiled machine, there tends to be a huge administrative burden on HR teams and driving process automation can really free up HR teams to become proactive and strategic rather than simply fulfilling an administrative support function. So how can we summarize some of the challenges that HR have faced and are facing today and how can we help to prepare HR as a function for tomorrow? If we rewind to three months ago, the paper based and manual processes were supported by an office based workforce. And then, of course, everything was turned on its head. Today, organisations face the same document and information based challenges as before, except now the limitations of previous working models are highlighted as many businesses have been forced to work remotely. This naturally brings a host of other challenges into the mix. For example, how do you access and manage information when you're not in the office? In a nutshell, paper-based processes no longer, in many ways, work. And even if organisations are managing their information and documents in, for example, uh, Windows file shares, they still have the same challenges around finding and managing that information effectively. As we look forwards, it's clear that digital processes and automation are vital for efficient working. Importantly, once you get beyond physically handling documents, once you get to the point where you're automating workflows within the HR function, you can then start looking at further enhancements and improvements, for example, introducing employee self-service. The net result is that organisations either need less people uh, in HR to fulfil the function or the roles become less administrative and more strategic. So HR teams can focus on what's really important to help in the organisation thrive. So what does the HR journey to digital transformation really look like? In our experience, this usually takes the form of three distinct phases. 
Phase one involves digitizing, classifying, and migrating all the existing hard copy records. Usually we would lift all of the physical files to one of our DataForge centers. And then the next time the customer sees the records, they are all presented within M files with documents classified, indexed, and fully searchable for HR teams. This enables information and documents to be accessed almost instantly, assuming the user has the required permissions, of course. And the information can be um, accessed regardless of whether uh, the user is working remotely or in an office, and also regardless of what type of device they're using to uh, access the content. Importantly, all of the information is presented in context, which means that a HR user can see all of the information related to what they're searching for or what they're actually viewing. M-Files call this the 360 degree view, which is quite powerful. And if you'd like to understand more about this, please contact us at the end of the presentation. Phase two is where things really get interesting. So we're now working in the digital domain. Records are being managed electronically. Information can be readily accessed and controlled. But the underlying business process which drove the documents and paper in the first place hasn't fundamentally changed. So unless a HR user wants to be standing at the photocopier in the future, scanning new documents that have been created, we need to look at the underlying business processes which are driving everything. So in this phase, we begin to identify and analyze manual process tasks. We identify compliance risks and we are finally able to model a new state for deployment. You'll hear more about how we achieve this from Ashley in the next part of the presentation. Finally, in phase three, we re-engineer the processes and apply new workflows. And this is where the real transformation occurs. So what could this actually look like for HR teams? It could look like uh, automating employee onboarding processes from the moment a job offer is issued to the day the employee actually starts employment and beyond, even if that employee never has to set foot in a physical office. It could look like automating workflows within the recruitment process or holiday management or managing performance reviews. Or it could look like employee self-service, where employees can readily access information which are relevant to themselves um, or even notify HR of changes or readily access policy changes, HR app updates, training material, etc. It could look like a whole host of process improvements. And I guess the big question that some of you may be asking is, how would you actually make this a reality? Well, Ashley is now going to show you how. Thanks, Matt, and welcome to everyone who's uh, joined us to view our presentation today. As Matt has said, uh, I'm going to spend the next 10 or 15 minutes uh, talking you through um, the methodology and the way that Stratus help organizations either start or continue on their digital transformation journey. In essence, I'm going to try and explain the how do you transform a current state process uh, to a new process that delivers those operational efficiencies, cost savings or compliance metrics uh, that you're trying to achieve. The key to achieving process excellence, in my opinion, is to understand the current state in detail, not simply understanding uh, the various process elements, but the metrics, the user experiences and all of those outlying pieces of data that are associated with the process. From this current state, you can then remodel and refine scenarios that define what good could look like in the new world. Sounds easy, but often a lack of understanding of that current state process uh, leads to a less than optimal redesign um, and failure to deliver on some of those benefits um, that you are trying to achieve. 
I'd like to share with you three ways that we uh, use to help us drive that transformation um, and how you move from today's process to the transformed state. Brand new and being shown for the first time today um, is the DataForge Transform powered by Business Optics plugin for MFOS. Uh, this is a plugin that we've developed that enables us to export a workflow that is, is sitting inside of MFOS and to visualize that within the Business Optics platform to enable refinement and development of that workflow for then redeployment. Um, a great um, advantage for us in that very often the workflows that you develop within the MFAS platform uh, are very difficult to visualize from a user perspective. And this tool gives us a really simple way to export and visualize some of those workflows. Secondly, I'm going to talk about rapid process discovery within the DataForge Transform platform. Um, in today's environment with COVID-19, um, it's more difficult to uh, get real face time with your audience and with the customer to go through that due diligence and uh, data gathering to understand the current state. What rapid process discovery enables you to do is to develop a form within uh, the DataForge platform to email that form to the subject matter experts across an organization. And when those subject matter experts uh, press submit and return that form to the platform, the platform coordinates and consolidates all of the input. Um, and that input is then dynamically generated into a process model. The business analyst can view all of the to's and fro's uh, with regards to the survey form uh, within the dashboard uh, and can see the changes that happen to that process model as the surveys are returned. And again, from this initial understanding of the current state, then further transformation uh, can be added uh, and scenarios modeled as to refinement to that process. Key to all of these initial capture scenarios um, is the metrics and the data that you collect along with the process steps. The more assets and the more data you can establish that sits around the current state provides you with the ability to really uh, drive that transformation in what is quite a scientific way. Within the process modeling platform, we can then look at these metrics, uh, look at particular aspects of the process that are available for transformation or automation, and actually plug in the new metrics that automation delivers. Importantly, as these metrics are built within the platform, we can automatically output in either HTML or PDF format visualizations of both the current state, the new state, and those changes that we've made. And more importantly, or maybe as importantly, to provide the data that sits with those different states. This data is then used by the platform to actually drive a return on investment graph a really powerful presentation of what automation truly delivers um, within the transformed state and a visualization that customers uh, find particularly useful to really get that understanding of what transformation means for them. The platform really does offer a simple environment in which to design your workflow and capture those metrics um, that sit around the various process steps, um, all the way from work instructions to uh, FTE costs to timings, etc. All of which are really valuable when it comes to that understanding of the current state uh, from which you can then run the scenarios to build uh, the transformation. Um, presentation can be done in PDF format and the system will automatically generate a PDF document that can be delivered directly to the customer or used internally to collaborate uh, and share ideas around that transformation.
Next steps for us as a business is to further develop that DataForge Transform platform, uh, which will enable us to not only export process from mFiles, but to take a transformed process from uh, the business optics platform and to be able to push that back into mFiles as a deployed process. Um, again, enabling us to close that loop on export, redesign, and then re-import of that process back into um, mFiles as a platform. And again, as we move through time, we are then additionally looking to build process mining into that capability and feature set. Um, with the ability to process mine a process within mFiles, to look at where particular blockages or particular process steps are available for further refinement. As I've mentioned earlier, the uh, availability of the system to generate the return on investment graph uh, and to present that and show the real financial benefits, along with the cycle time reductions that can be achieved um, in a HTML or again PDF format is very powerful when you can just share that with the audience that you're working with. So I hope you've seen that it really is a simple uh, and effective way of generating that current state and then presenting the transformation various ways that are meaningful uh, to the customers that we're working with. Let's now move from the theory um, and pass across to, uh, I guess, reality. Um, I'm going to ask James to uh, take over uh, and show you how that re-engineered and transformed process um, within mFiles actually works. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, James, welcome. Over to you. Thanks, Ash. Good morning, everyone. I'm James Hanford, Head of Professional Services at Stratus, and I'm going to take you through a few stages within our employee onboarding workflow. We have a number of roles set up for this process, so um, I'll be switching between them as we go, but hopefully you'll be able to see the colour coded on the bottom, so hopefully that'll make it simple to follow. Um, we joined this process a little way in, where we've already recruited somebody, and we've already done the uh, offer of a job. So we have a job offer letter in the system. Where we're going to start is we're going to issue the, employee, the new employee contract, and then we're going to go through some of the onboarding steps. So um, in the HR admin role, we have a task for create new employee contract, which we can just right click and create a new employee contract. So we'll automatically fill in with the employee's information and we can put in a start date of today. And it has generated the document which we can then open to edit. So obviously it's using uh, the template system within MFAS to generate the documents and there are placeholders within here just so we can fill in uh, the variable bits of information. So you know, 20 days holiday, and we can save and close. Check it. Now from here, I can now move this on to the review stage. And if I switch to the director role, we now have a task to review the document before sending. Um, I'm just going to approve it and save that and that will send the document out through DocuSign. So give that a couple of seconds and we should there we go, receive the contract into the employee inbox which we can view and as with DocuSign we can scroll through the document and we'll jump straight to where we need to Sign the document. Complete it back into the workflow. Now that that's been signed, we'll switch back to the HR administrator role. And we should see that the document is now marked as signed. And we have a signed copy stored against the 
employee. Let's go to the bottom. Yeah, we have the signature. Uh, we'll also see that that document is obviously associated to the employee along with the job offer letter. Um, and what that will have also done is moved the workflow now onto the induction stage and created a number of assignments for other users. So if we switch to uh, the line manager first. So it's now Rebecca's first day and the line manager has a task to do all the basic employee induction tasks. So take them on a building tour, make sure they have access to the computer, give them a tour of M files, and introduce them to the team. And then the line manager can accept that once he's done all, or she's done her, all her work. Now, if we switch back to the HR administrator, uh, we can see that there is a set of tasks now for the HR to complete the induction. So we need to set up the bank details and set up in payroll, HMRC documents. Um, and if we scan and upload, some information. So what we'll do is we will add this one, add a scan of her driving license, just put it in as a document. And associate it. Driving license. Mark that as complete. And then associate and continue on. We can then switch to the employee themselves. And they have their own induction tasks. So they have been allocated, if we click on the assignments, they've been allocated um, to read the company handbook, which has been linked and to set up their Microsoft Outlook signature. Again, we can just tick those in a moment and say they are done. And we need to, we also need to create an emergency contact. So we can create a new emergency contact. I'll set it to Rebecca. A little bit of information in. No one on that. And create that. And then we can save. That will have then completed the workflow through. Um, the employee themselves will now be, if we go back to the administrator tasks, uh, they should now be at the awaiting end of probation stage so the user will then continue until the end of their probation period at which point the workflow can then continue on to full-time employee out of probation um thanks for watching if there's any questions um don't hesitate to ask after the presentation thanks thank you james during this presentation we've shared some of the information challenges that face HR teams. We've discussed the typical phases that we see customers transition through, and we've shown you how to make it a reality, and then focused on some specific use cases to show a transformed process working within M-Files. But what is the real value in doing this? In our view, by transforming manually intensive processes through automation, there is immense value in making information instantly accessible, making it easy to find, and being able to control it effectively. Crucially, the process time can be dramatically reduced, enabling HR teams to be more responsive and agile. Through doing this, the employee experience can also be enhanced, whether that's at a director level, a line manager, or a frontline member of staff. Aside from enabling HR to function effectively in a post-COVID-19 world, driving process improvement can also have a direct impact on cost. And there are really two ways of looking at the cost element. 
So either you need less heads to fulfill a function, or perhaps you can utilize your resources to focus on core functions of the HR role. By transforming HR functions so there is significantly less emphasis on administration, you enable the function to move from reactive to proactive and from support to strategic. Thank you for your time. We hope you found this useful and we'll now move into a Q&A session to answer some of the questions that we've received during this presentation.